The Department of Justice and the SEC investigating the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, and the red flags were definitely there. Reports now showing that the bank's board of directors was filled with major Democrat donors. Well, we might have guessed that part, but now we know. Just one, yes, one board member had previous investment banking experience. Just one. I guess that means you or I could go run that bank. And we would have done a better job because we know how to balance the books. Reports also reveal that the bank pushed for an A rating for ESG. You know, that's the environmental, social, and corporate governance. Critics say Biden's rescue of the bank is just a recipe for bad behavior. If there's no risk at all for any depositor of any size, what stops banking managers who are just compensated on equity from just going crazy? You've always got idiot managers. This is a breathtaking step, uh, which effectively nationalizes or federalizes the deposit base of the U.S. financial system. Now, uh, you can call it a bailout, you can call it something else, but it's, it's really absolutely profound. I'm gonna call it theft. Maria Bartiromo, anchor of Mornings with Maria and Sunday Morning Futures, is on the mez with me today. Good to see you. Great to see you. Thank you so, so much, Harris. Uh, thank you. So the top line to me in all of this is a bunch of people, with the exception of one person at that bank, didn't know what they were doing, and they were running all sorts of money. Well, it's unfortunate, but there were a few people at this bank who actually also oversaw the situation at Lehman Brothers. And to start thinking about what went on when Lehman failed in that famous weekend gets you to start thinking about maybe we have a problem here. And of course, we are looking at a market that is reacting to that today. How, do the, how does that happen, that that many people in Lehman, how do you even get a job after that? I mean. So you show up, you don't have any kind of experience. Are you surprised that this happened? Well, uh, when you look at what took place at Silicon Valley Bank, it is the classic bank run. In other words, at one point, collectively speaking, people thought, we got to get our money out. They all went to get their deposits out at one time, causing this company to scramble to raise money. They couldn't raise the appropriate amount of money. When the market started figuring out they need money, they can't raise the money, it actually got the cycle getting worse and worse. I will say this about this bank. This is unique to Silicon Valley Bank. However, when you and I put money in a deposit account, we feel like, okay, we're safe. We have our money in an account. We've got money in the checking account. You've got money in your savings account. Even as rates move higher, the Federal Reserve raise interest rates, those rates never move. This is like 1%. Yeah, 1 you're not point, making money. You're not money. making any money in your savings account. But this situation was different because the deposit customers were not you and me. The deposit customers were venture capital, private equity. As soon as they got wind that this company was struggling and couldn't raise money, they took their money all out at once. We're not doing that in our savings account. So the deposit structure at Silicon Valley Bank made them real vulnerable. Let's talk about privilege and special treatment by the federal government. Why is there even talk on the table about paying out for people who have more than that cap 250000 as insured by the FDC? Is it because they're Democrat donors? Is it, why, why is this even in the conversation? Well, it's a great question, and it's actually two points to this. On the one hand, I would be surprised if I saw the same kind of treatment. Let's say if this bank was actually in Texas and all of the customers were oil companies. And, you know, I don't know that you would have seen the same treatment. At the same time, you're seeing a situation where there's talk of should we be, you know, securing all the deposits of all banks. It's impossible. You cannot do that. Do that. That's moral hazard. So I don't know why you're even having that conversation. Uh, there was an article in the FT the other way. Ken Griffin, who runs Citadel, said, this is the end of capitalism. You cannot have oh. this idea that if you lose money, you make mistakes, the federal government bails you out. But make no mistake, Harris, this is a bailout. It doesn't matter if it's somebody else's footing the bill. It's a bailout. It depends on who's paying that bill. Is it taxpayers? No. It's a Consumers and the it's banks. It's going to be us. The though. banks pay into this fund. Yeah, because they're going to raise our fees. They're, they'll find ways to to take it out of our pockets. All right, a couple things to get to. Bailed out Signature Bank executives. So that's here in New York. Reportedly spent millions of dollars producing some cringy parody videos, including this one from when they first launched 
in nearly two thousand in the early two thousands. Here it is. Watch. What 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 are we looking? I have uh, yeah. They did this video a few years ago. I have no idea what this video is about. I mean, it scares me that this is what they were doing and they were talking about. Also scary is the priority of ESG over actually uh, safety and returns for for bankers. Well, and it costs a lot of money to to make that. Like yeah. they they spent some cash. Real quickly before we move on, you mentioned something right as we were going to air about China's role and what we saw out west with Silicon Valley Bank and what's keeping you up at night. What is it? Well, look, we've talked a lot about the threat of communist China. Silicon Valley Bank was also a place for Chinese companies, technology startups to park their money. So when this all started falling apart last week and over the weekend, it was too soon. China wasn't even open yet, so they missed it. They couldn't stop it. But then we learned that all of these companies, they're also getting the same bailout because these Chinese Chinese companies were relying on Silicon Valley Bank wow. for the lending, and they are also out of luck. So the fact that you're seeing a bailout, which I know the administration doesn't want to call it that, it's also bailing out these Chinese companies. And I think we need to recognize that this was a big lender for Chinese high-tech startups. That is such an important piece of yeah. information right there. All right, sky-high prices still crushing Americans despite a slight slowing in overall inflation last month. I mean, it's taking forever. It was 9.1 in June. It's 6% now. This is like the slowest come down of anything. Prices of essentials like groceries and gasoline still well above last year and where they should be. Some experts like former President Obama's ex-economic advisor, Jason Furman, are pointing to core inflation as a sign it's not slowing down anytime soon. Core inflation, by the way, excludes volatile indices like food and energy, and Furman says it's climbed for about the past three months. Larry Kudlow with this. The country still has a very big inflation problem, no matter what Biden keeps telling us, and the Fed's in a real pickle. They may have to raise the target by a quarter because inflation continues hot. You know, folks, just to sum up here, this whole episode, high inflation, high interest rates, bank financial worries, crazy left-wing woke policies. None of this stuff had to happen. Do you agree with that? Well, yes, I do, because this is bad policy. You've had interest rates at zero for 15 years. When you have such low interest rates, people want returns. They search for yield, and they search for yield in sometimes risky places. So bad policy, rates too low for too long, and then not even a year, we see rates go from zero to 4.5%. I mean, it's interesting that this week will be one year since the Federal Reserve started raising interest rates. It was March 17th. We haven't even been here wow. a year, and it usually takes a lag effect of one year to 18 months to actually feel an impact. That's why I do feel like we are going to see a recession later this year, Harris. Uh, all right, so I have a list of things that have gone up in price. It's all of those other goods now. That what they call super core inflation, getting your hair cut, you know, all the services, everything is precipitously higher. And that hurts. It is. And food and shelter are the two sticky, they call that areas of inflation that will not go away. Yeah, uh, a dozen eggs now in the last reading was up 55 percent year over right. year, maybe not 70 percent. But you're still seeing this elevated notion. And with the Federal Reserve raising interest rates, that's going to create real slowdown. Well, and as you have talked about on your program, um, yeah, so the bird flu now is factored out. Yeah, <laughs> that's what, that's why it's still sitting at 55 percent. Yeah, we're at the end of flu season almost. Great to see you. You too, Thank you. Harris, oh, thank so you. much to get to. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.